are you doing on Sunday, July the 24th? Che programmi hai per il 24 luglio? C'est l'arrivée du Tour euh, sur les champs. Oui, mais pas que. À partir du 24 de julio, le cyclisme continue. The Tour de France continues with the women. Desde Paris hasta la Super Planche de Belfil. From the Champs Elysees in Paris to la Super Planche de Belfil. Guarda il meglio del ciclismo femminile. Schauen Sie sich die top Radfahrerinnen an auf Eurosport, auf GCN Plus. Disfrutalo integro en Eurosport y la app de Eurosport. Et sur les applications Eurosport GCN. Hello everyone, welcome to everyone who's joined us for this preview of the Tour de France Femme. We're also going to be discussing major talking points in women's cycling and covering the, the very broad topic of what it is to be a woman in cycling these days. And Warner Brothers Discovery Sports has been at the forefront of promoting women's cycling, and we cannot wait to share our news and views with you all today. And um, Firstly, we are delighted to announce that by securing the rights for the Stimac Ladies Tour, Warner Brothers Discovery Sports now shows 100% of the Women's World Tour for viewers all around the world to enjoy live. And that really re-establishes our position as the home of women's cycling, which is something I'm incredibly proud of. It all started, of course, with the first official women's Tour de France in 1984. And now, today, stars of the women's peloton from Annemiek van Vleuten to Marianne Vos will line up for the Tour de France Femme avec Zwift across eight stages that will have fans, I guarantee you, on the very edges of all of our seats. And Warner Brothers Discovery Sports via Discovery Plus, Eurosport and GCN Plus will be there every pedal stroke of the way. The yellow jersey. Finally in our hands. Follow every stage of the season's most anticipated race, where history will be made. The only question is, by who? The Tour de France fam, live on Eurosport and Discovery Plus. Who's excited? Who's excited? Right, well, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panellists for today. Before um, I bring them in, I just want to point out that we will be leaving room for um, questions at the very end. Um, so please use the, um, I think there's a hands up button, isn't there, function on Zoom. Um, for any questions, we'll have about 20 minutes of chat first and then and then we'll get to any questions that you might have. Um, but I am truly delighted to be joined in this discussion by three women who I have the utmost respect for, both professionally and personally. First of all, former professional rider Iris Slappendale. Iris, if you could show us your lovely face. Thank you. Uh, we also have commentator Jose B. Varbenia Jose. Here, hello. Hello, <laughs> lovely to see you. Goedemorgen. And last and certainly not least, respected cycling journalist and host, Laura Messiger. Hola, que tal? Hello, hello. Here I am. Hello. <laughs> Thank you to the three of you for time to do this. I know we're all in the middle of an incredibly busy um, time of the year. But firstly, I'd like to look ahead to the Tour de France fan of Exwick, which I am genuinely so excited to be working on for Warner Brothers Discovery Sports. I don't think I'd be able to watch this one from afar. Um, Eris, what are you most looking forward to in this race, first of all? It's such a massive question, but it's going to be such a massive week of racing, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm mostly looking forward to the race just being here uh, to start with. I think that's just really exciting. And uh yeah, I'm personally looking forward to to being at the race, uh, to report from the race. I think that's going to be really, really great. But I think it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, we all know now it's it's a massive thing for for women cycling. The the Tour de France femme is here, and uh, I'm just looking forward to hopefully seeing like very exciting and and great racing every day. Yeah, and I think we're in a really privileged position of, of having women cycling at a place where we all genuinely believe we will see incredibly exciting racing. It's been an, an amazing season so far already. We'll get to your role on the bike in just a moment, but Jose, what are you most looking forward to from the race? Well, it, it, I've, been, I've been posting the roster so far, and 
every team so far lines up their best riders. Mm -hmm. There's not one superstar who stays at home. This is the best of the best of women's cycling. And there will be a story to tell every day. Um, and it's not only the story of the winners, but also the story of who was in the breakaway or somebody who got last. And, and now we got the podium to tell all these stories. And, and I've been saying for 10 years when, when we started, when I started in, in cycling, when we get the chance to tell the story about the women in the peloton, we can give the, me the people the opportunity to become fans of them. And now we have the podium, we can show them and people will become fans of the characters in the women's peloton and not only the winners, but also all the others. And it, it's going to be so, so exciting. Because you've given me goosebumps, just <laughs> thinking of all of that. But that is the one, I think, huge advantage that women's racing has had for such a long time. And no, no disrespect to the guys at all. But the stories within women's racing, I think, are so much more colourful and textured and um, there's just more depth to them because a lot of the women have had to live separate lives as well as riding their bikes. And that, to me, is what's so exciting, that it brings in a, a level of being able, able to identify with the riders, even as we worship at their greatness. Um, Lara, what are you most looking forward to, would you say? Hi, Orla. I must say I'm nervous as I've never been before. <laughs> I don't know why. I have I mean, after covering six uh, Tour de France, almost 20 Grand Tours, um, I have this feeling of being part of something really huge, you know, to have the privilege of being on site in this historical moment, this pivotal moment, huge for the sport. And to, to say um, that I'm proud of our sport to be diverse and inclusive and um, to have the best... Um, at least in these eight days of competition, I think it's going to be so exciting, really, that I can't wait to be the eyes of the spectator mm -hmm. and to hear all these stories and sharing time also with the Irish. She will be also in the motorbike. So really, I'm so excited for this. I know what you mean about those nerves. I find that I think we're also aware of the importance of this place in sporting history, not just yeah. cycling history. And that brings quite a responsibility, I think, on all of our shoulders mm -hmm. to get this right. It brings a responsibility to ASO, the race organisers. They've got to put on a display that's worthy of the female peloton. And we know how incredibly, wonderfully the women race. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to showcase that. But I think that we all feel that pressure as well. We want to make sure that we're doing everybody justice, really. Um, I'm so excited as well that we're using the Cube, which you've been doing for the men's racing and giving that parity of platform to the women's racing. And that's, I think, where we've been trying to get to for such a long time. It's like when we had the women's pie rebate, it felt like I, I was in tears that morning. I can't lie. I just mm -hmm. felt like we're getting somewhere and this is a beautiful thing. And, and once again, uh, the riders have put on a, an incredible spectacle, which I know they're going to do over uh, the course of... Uh, the Trinity France fan, there is that, that issue of visibility and having women visible across all platforms of this sport. How important is that, do you think, for the wider audience? Um, yeah, I, I think it's really important. And I think both you and your say already explained it really well. I think for, for the, as a writer, it's, it's just really important. And, and yeah, it's really important and nice that you know that what your achievements are visible. It's not just a uh, result that you can find online, but there's like so much more to tell. It's not just it's not just the, the top three or the winners in the race, but it's also the early attacks, the breakaways, like all these uh, all these incredible riders that that um, are at the start line this Sunday. They have they will make somehow a mark in this race. And that will be visible. So therefore, I think it's really important that we can watch it live, that there are experts in every uh, country to, to report on the race, uh, that we're there, that we can speak with the riders. So for as a rider, I think that's just probably the coolest uh, about this Women's Tour de France, that it's, that it's been shown uh, all around. And... Um, uh, yeah, so I think it, it's really important, not just, and I think it will also have an impact, and you already see that, not just at this race, this specific race, but also the other races and the careers of the riders, because they can really, they can really show themselves in these eight days, and that will have an impact on their, yeah, on their careers. 
you know, we finally get to hero worship these goddesses. It's what we've been wanting to do for such a long time. Lara, to move the discussion away ever so slightly briefly, um, you mentioned the number of Tours de France um, that you have covered the men's race. Of course, you started for US what I think in 2014 covering that mm -hmm. race. Um, again, it's a very broad question, um, but it's one that I'm very aware of because I think our careers are quite similar in that respect. What kind of obstacles would you say you faced as a woman in, <clears throat> in cycling, which has traditionally been men's cycling, it's not changing, but um, mm -hmm. as a woman in men's cycling, how do you find it? Well, Orla, um, yeah, my first tour was 2014 with the Eurosport, but my first Vuelta, let's say it was 2007. And I remember those days, um, people from the organization used to grab me and tell me, here's no, the, this is not the place for hostess. And, and I had to say, no, I'm not a hostess. I'm a journalist. <laughs> I'm working on communications for, you know, and, 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 some people since then uh, think that I uh, I started my career being a hostess in La Vuelta, which is not a problem for me, but shows the place we used to have women in this sport. Then in 2012, um, at the tour, not yet with Eurosport, it's true that the press the press room, it was full, maybe 300 men, and I was just the only woman there. And with the years, it has changed. You know, now we are... A, bigger number which is so nice not only in media but in in the sport in general and um also with the the, the last reflections of, of developments related to women to feminists i have made some reflections also in these past years because i can't tell you i have any difficulties because i hadn't but it's true that um i needed more time to gain their respect uh, as a journalist, probably, no, probably not, for sure, because of my position, <laughs> like a woman, you know? Uh, so I, at the beginning, when I started, I know that many people, uh, I think more like the eldest generations were asking like, what is she doing here? But it was not the same question that was made or, you know, for all the men. And also I have, um, a few years ago, I remember um, writers from the peloton saying, I know, but we respect you so much or you have the respect of the peloton. And I consider that like something good, like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But then with the years, I started thinking, why should be something good? This is mm -hmm. something that they only tell me or they tell to every mm -hmm. journalist that are here at the tour, you know? So uh, as I said, I didn't have any specific difficulties and I, I never care about what people say, but because it's, I'm like this. But it's true that it helped me to see that we are treated different, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think this is changing because we are many more now, but, but, but it's interesting. And I think it's a reflection that we needed to do. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that when my first year of France was 2010, and I remember from then, um, I would often get asked, I, I want to say always, it felt like I was always being asked, are you into cycling though? Are you interested yeah. in sport? And I find that a really shocking question because mm. I never heard my male counterparts being asked if they were interested in cycling or why they were interested in cycling or why they were interested in sport. Yeah. The assumption was they're men, so of course they're interested in sport. For me, I'm here, so of course I'm interested in it. Mm. But it is funny as well, Laura, that you say that then when you turn people around and you do have to work harder, you simply do. And I think it probably is still the case today um, that you've got to work harder to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. But then you would get a lot of respect in return and people saying, oh, you know, we massively respect you. But as you say, I think progress really when they don't need to say that anymore because it's almost mm -hmm. there's a dot, 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 there's a PS, we respect you even though you're a woman, you've proved yourself even though you're a woman. And I think once we're at a level playing field, we won't need that anymore. Mm. Um, Jose, you're really active on social media with regards to all of this. How do you view or what's your, um, what's your standpoint and how women in cycling are viewed and how women's cycling is viewed? Um, I've done three Tour de France's and four Vuelta's for Eurosport Netherlands. I was actually the first lead commentator mm. for Eurosport on the Tour de France. Um, mm. And the amount of garbage I've had uh, while working for the Dutch Eurosport, uh, so in for Flanders and the Netherlands, is, is, has been absolutely staggering. Uh, the things that people write to you, 
um, just for the sole fact that you had the guts or the audaciousness to be a woman and to be involved in their sport, because that is what they kind of make clear to me. It's like, how do you dare to enter our little boys club of cycling? And I got things about my voice. I got things that I talk too little, too much, that too much about cheese, too little about cheese. All the things I got threats. I, I had sexual abuse. Everything happened uh, in those years. It was one of the reasons that I left in 2019, um, because in the end, it just becomes too much. You know, it piles up and it piles up. I came back last year and there's been a significant change, absolutely staggering, staggering difference between uh, now and back then. I don't know if that is a thing uh, about working in the English language compared to the little bit more conservative nature of the Dutch and the Flemish, but the difference is staggering. I have not had more than five negative comments since I came back last year in February to commentary at, um, in, in English. So the difference is there and, and the development is there. But just like you said, Laura, I have things people said to me, it's like, oh, you do know a lot about cycling, pause, for mm -hmm. a woman. <laughs> yeah, <having her. laughs> like, do you want to give me a compliment or do you want to insult me? It's like, yeah. this is not a compliment that you're giving me. It's, it's like, oh, you know a lot about sports for a woman is not a compliment. And well, things have changed considerably. Mm. And I'm really, really hopeful for the future that there will be more female lead commentators because I think there's only a handful in the world. We do have mm. more and more experts now, uh, but lead commentary is still predominantly a male thing. And online as well, just like you experienced that, Orla, there's so, so much support now when we do meet some online trolls because they will keep coming out of the wherever they stay at night. Um, and the support now <laughs> is is absolutely staggering. People do not accept this anymore. They do not accept the kind of things that we were told or that we are told just for the sole fact that we, that we were, were born a woman. It's like, it's not my merit that I'm a woman. It's just, I'm here. I love cycling, I love sports, and I love to talk about it. And, and, and now it, things are changing really, really fast. That's what I really want to tell the people. It's not as bad as it used to be. Mm -hmm. So well said, you say, and I, I hope you don't mind me laughing whenever you said about the people who, who argue that you're coming along and ruining their sport. Um, I, I find that quite amusing as well whenever I, I choose to dress the way I dress in the studio and some people will accuse me of ruining our sport but they only say it during the Tour de France and I think well if you love the sport that much you would have seen me wearing exactly the same stuff through the classic season through the Giro d'Italia and now we're at the Tour de France so um, I want to ask very briefly because I do want to leave enough time for people to ask questions if they want but I want to bring us back to the Tour de France fans um, Iris, you're going to be back in the bike, and I love seeing you do this. It was such fun, especially the first um, Pyro Bay was one of my favourite races, seeing you in the middle of all of that. What are you looking forward to over the course of the eight stages? Um, yeah, I, I'm mostly looking forward. Yeah, I mean, for me also, Roubaix was a, was a really nice experience, and I really enjoyed just yeah being in the race, being on the back of the, of the motorbike, uh, being around the peloton but also you you know being able to really um uh, capture the atmosphere so the fans on the roadside the 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 weather the the road conditions uh to see the riders from up close i think that was that was really close and uh, that was really special and and i hope yeah i'm just I think it's just really great. I can do that now for eight days in a row. <laughs> and I'm preparing for a lot of like muscle pain because I have to hold on tight for eight days. <laughs> uh, but hopefully not so tight. Yeah, hopefully not so tight as, uh, as Roubaix. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, it's just, uh, I mean, the stages that I look forward to most are stage four, actually the, the stage be just, a very we're, we're just hectic stage as well. Uh, um, we just lost maybe, stage four. Ah, I'm I looking forward to stage four. Do you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. I'm you again. Uh, so stage four and of course the last two stages. So I think they're going to be, uh, yeah, very spectacular. You say, is there a rider or a stage in particular that you're looking forward to seeing? Um, well, stage four is, of course, going to be really, really long. Uh, 175 kilometers, longest 
stage ever in a women's race. So I'm, I'm really inter interested to see what the dynamic is going to be like. And having seen the men at the uh, Super Planche de Défi, I am yeah. so, <laughs> so looking forward to seeing what the women can do there because it's it's 28%, it's or 24%, 28%, something like that. It's absolutely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And um, you can just lose your entire Tour de France on that final climb. You know, you can go on the final day. Bits on the final yeah. day and um yeah and, and of course the champs elysees that very first yellow jersey and uh, you know for us dutch we we hardly can lose that one with lorena libus but um <laughs> <laughs> that is that is something to look forward to and and just hearing the stories following the social media of the riders as well is what i'm looking forward to there's many who are so active on instagram with great content and just to mm. hear their stories about what happened on their day it's it's going to be it's going to be big and it's going to be uh time consuming as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think already under your flag there for Beavis. i mean obviously i'm kind of dutch these days so i'll go with that but it's not going to be a, a stroll up the champs elysees i think um i think there's going to be a bit of competition for that anyway lara what are you looking forward to most what particular stage or rider well, I agree with what they said. I think these are going to be like the crucial moments of the race. But it's true that I'm looking forward since the very first minute to the end. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the first time I'm covering a woman's race. So can't wait to meet them live, all the riders, you know, to to see them racing, but to to interview them, to talk with them, to see their reactions, how they deal with the the competition with the stress with the you know with everything and then as uh, Jose said uh, you see on social network how excited everyone is so passionate you know this is this is why I'm so nervous today you know <laughs> because I think we all feel like it's gonna be something huge and and can't wait to see that first yellow jersey as well in the Champs-Élysées. Laura whisper it quietly but you're gonna find it's a lot more relaxed and a lot more fun than men's yeah. racing. I think you're going to absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, um, nice. Can't so wait. Um, I think we can take a few questions from anybody um, else attending right now if you want to. Um, Steve, this is your laptop, so I will defer to you. If you do want to um, ask a question, then you go to the um, three dots at the, no, yeah, just raise a hand. Um, to ask a question there. So do we have any at the moment? Does anybody want to ask anything? Um, as I wait to see that, I want to ask Jose, um, Balsamo, surely she's got to be another shot for stage one. Yeah, especially <laughs> since it's slightly uphill and she's got a rather amazing team. It's, it's going to be uh, really exciting. Raquel Valdieri is in great form as well when it comes to sprinting. And, and who knows, you know, it hasn't happened a lot in the men's Tour de France that a rider stayed clear. But uh, somebody like Iris, for example, in her days could have done that uh, to mm. stay clear of a, of a peloton like that. And why don't we talk about Mariana Foss? Because I think that could actually be like a very a very dark horse for the first stage like she won the very first lap mm -hmm. course after she's been uh, advocating for the women's to the front and i think it would make the story, story complete, complete. Yeah. Yeah. She would win it. yeah i do love mm -hmm. how it's such a level of women's racing that we've got mariana voss as a dark horse it <laughs> <laughs> says a lot doesn't it <laughs> Um, what about, who's excited about Annemiek van Vleuten in particular? And more importantly, can she be beaten, really? Yeah, I think... Oh, sorry, Larry, go ahead. No, 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 no. I think uh, Movistar has just published their uh, roster for the Tour de France. Uh, she's, yeah. she's incredibly, yeah, strong. That seems super mm -hmm. strong. Um, I mean, I heard, by the way, that there will be 29 riders from the Netherlands. It's like the 20% of the of the participants. <laughs> yeah, so it's amazing. <laughs> you have all the talent. <laughs> I can tell you, I have, I don't have any of the talent, Laura. There's also <laughs> many people. There's also many people here who don't have the talent, but many do. Yes. I could at least claim some sort of patriotic allegiance when it comes to women's racing. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you know. Um, we have somebody, we've got three raising a hand, but I can't, how do I see? Oh, I see. 
Fee, maybe you can, um, does she need to, uh, there we go. Fee, ask your question, go ahead, you unmute yourself. Lovely. Hi, Orla, thank you. Um, hi guys, thank you so much. Really enjoyed the, the panel this morning, so thank you. Um, thank you. Just wanted to ask really, um, with the tour being eight stages, um, question to all of you really, what sort of cycling and tactics do you think we will see um, uh, across the women's peloton? Different on every stage, I think, and that's the beauty of, of the parkour, because I think, with, well, with all racing, the racing is often dictated by the kind of a course that we get to see. And I think the fact that we will see sprints, we will see days that punchers will be able to get away, maybe, um, that, that we will see climbing days. It will just totally depend on the race action in the, on any given day. But I think what's really exciting about women's racing right now mm -hmm. is it's the right time to be doing this. I don't know if you all agree, but I think if we had this race even just three or four years ago, we didn't have the strength and depth of teams to be able to make it as um, as tactical a game as it can now be. We saw an awful lot of, for quite a long time, and every still know this better than anyone, but, but like women's racing was dynamic for such a long time because you had individuals who were so strong and they could go up the road and then it was mm. it was almost mano a mano. And, and, you know, we obviously that's man on man, but I don't know how we're going to have to say that for the women. Um, whereas now we, we've got such strong teams that are able to, to play this out tactically. And I think that's going to be really interesting to see. Yeah, and, and I also think if I can add that, um, and it's actually nice, I like it that it's only eight days because it will keep the tension and uh, it will not be super uh, uh, early decided. Although I still think that this stage, stage four, this gravel stage uh, could be a really tricky one. And with Anami van Vleute being the out and out favorite, it's really already up to the other teams to attack her a bit sooner in the race and not wait for that last two stages. So I think, um, yeah, every day will be there. We will, of course, be the battle for the for the over uh, for the stages. But there will also be uh, already a battle. Uh, maybe, yeah, that sounds a bit negative, but to beat Anamik already quite early in a week, I think. And Demi Voring is the national gravel championship uh, champion, so uh, she's got a little bit of advantage there. But this um, gravel yeah. is not uh, is not uh, like much <laughs> gravel, I could tell you. <laughs> but we, we did see in the Giro that um, she's not unbeatable. Uh, Kristen Faulkner was really crafty, yeah. really smart in the Giro uh, Dome. Um, and there will be other riders. Demi Voring, she's not been super strong this year so far, not like she was last year. But with the team that she brings with SD Works, um, it, it's an amazing team with all the experience, for example, of Ashley Molman as a road captain, of Damie Vollering with all the strength that she has. And she basically has a home race on the final two stages because she lives just across the border in Switzerland. She's been doing a lot of reconning already in the uh, in the Vosges uh, mountains, in the Jura Um and I do hope that she brings the dog to the podium. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. my that's my per, that's my personal wish. We have babies. We have babies on the podium of the men's race in Charles Elysee. I want Damie to bring the dog to the podium. <laughs> Damie's dog. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I think we have the like all the ingredients to have a great race, like the parkour. Uh, I find it super interesting and. I think uh, it helps to ride aggressive and the riders, the women's peloton have this attitude. So I, I really can't wait for this. I think anime, yeah, it's gonna be difficult to, to battle her, but um, we'll see. I'm also excited to see the, the Spanish riders. We don't have uh, many of them, but uh, Mavi Garcia was third in the Giro, so in the Giro Tone. So I'm really looking forward to see what she can achieve in this race. Hopefully I do like for her, it will be point. 40 degrees. Oh. <laughs> I do like your point, though, about you were saying you don't want to be negative. I don't think it's negative at all in terms of racing. I think I really like that the parkour lends itself to anime conversion in the last couple of stages. It does mean that we're going to have to have racing from the off. Nothing can be nullified. We can't wait for the last couple of stages to take this win. You've got to try to get an advantage on her before we get to that stage. And I think that's going to make the racing incredibly exciting, hopefully. Um, teams will have to race this aggressively. Can't wait. Um, <laughs> no one else has any more questions. You've got you've got time for one last one. If anybody wants to put your hand up, but I think we've pretty much covered everything right now. Um, and if we don't have any hands, then I will thank you all um, for your time this morning. And thank you, Iris. Thank you, Uzi. Thank you, Lara. It's been lovely to catch up with you all. 
Um, I don't get to see you all in person very much. So this is an absolute treat. Um, arguably the duel in the women's crime, in the crime rather of women's cycling starts this Sunday. Warner Brothers Discovery Sports as the home of women's cycling will be there for all the key moments. And I genuinely hope that everyone in this call spreads the word and that you're all watching it with us because it's going to be an absolute thriller. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, everybody.